Hey, welcome back to the pod. You're here with Neo, your host. All right, guys, I'm going to say it. I am sick of Taylor Swift. I'm done. I'm like, I'm so far, so far into a different universe, galaxy even, with this whole Taylor Swift fandom. Pandemonium is what I would call it. And you know what's really annoying about this whole thing is like, I, I'm a Swifty. Like I have been a day one fan, but it's gotten too much for me. Um, and I was, I think my coworker summarized it perfectly the other day. She was like, it's not Taylor Swift, the person that I'm getting the ick over, it's Taylor Swift the, as the subject. Her as the subject, I'm, I'm so done with, I have no time for it anymore. And you know why? Because I'm in Singapore and I feel like Taylor Swift just finished performing here for like two weeks and it was a painful time, like very painful. But before I dig further into that, let me just, you know, let's just take a step back. I'm taking a step back. I'm appreciating that I am a Swifty. I first came across Taylor Swift when I was, I reckon I was 14. Yeah. Anyway, I went to a concert when I was, I think I was 15. So I've been a fan for a while, like teardrops on my guitar. Like I'm there since day one, guys. Um, and everyone's like, oh my God, Al's song's so good now. And I'm like, excuse me, that song is so old. But yes, it's a slammer. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I grew up with Taylor Swift, was there in her country era before she ever converted to, and like switched over to pop and into all her different eras. So I was there from day one. Would just like to start there. I have been to her concert in 2009. Amazing in Melbourne, so good. Like literally I remember calling my friend on my flip phone and just calling her, saying nothing, but just playing, like letting her hear Taylor Swift playing through the speakers and she was so jealous. It was like such an awesome moment. Um, but yeah, I, I love Taylor Swift to like have always loved her music. If you play Taylor Swift, like, and you see me in my house, you wouldn't have seen me in my household, but if you're a fly on the wall in my household, you see that I get down to her music and am a great appreciator. However, the pandemonium around her recently, I am just so done with. Okay, so I didn't go to the concert at all, and I made an active decision not to go because I have been to Taylor Swift twice. I went in her Fearless tour, and then I went in um, 1989 tour. Um, and so I know, like, I know she's a great performer. I appreciate her as a performer. I think she's amazing. And so I was like, oh yeah, like I want other people to experience this. Like I, one, I wasn't gonna drop a whole lot of money on it because I just felt like I've already seen her twice. Secondly, the way they were setting up the concerts, I was like, it's gonna be really hard to get tickets. And like, from what I was seeing people go through in like Melbourne and Sydney, I was like, mm -mm, I'm not even gonna try. Cause like, you know, it's like when you try to go you like you attach yourself to the idea of going to something and then it fails that it just breaks your heart like just it's not even worth putting yourself through that heartbreak anyway so i made an active decision not to go because of pricing availability and competitiveness for tickets and thirdly i just felt like i've already seen her twice why not give other people the experience to go and see her so i tapped myself out of this concert and i was very i'm very happy i was very happy with that decision um but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, guys. I was tested very, very much in this in this whole Taylor Swift tour in Asia. I was tested. I, I did think about it seriously, like a few times about getting tickets. I never searched for them because I was like, I'm not even gonna bother. But Alex did search, and he was like, Oh, they're so expensive. And I was just like, No, nope, not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Not gonna buckle to the uh, environment and the en endless stories on my Instagram of people at Taylor Swift. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm really glad that I didn't go and I stuck to my guns, but honestly, the exposure and the amount of like media coverage it had, it was just all too much and, and sickening. And what I would say is like this Taylor Swift, why I find it too much and a bit sickening, all of this like fandom around her is like, I have, I have my reasons and we're going to delve into them, but I just... Yeah, I think it's just, yeah, it really is just her as a subject. Okay, let's get into it. So my initial thoughts were like, wow, is her PR team like that good? Do you think they actually like wrote out this plan and were like, we're gonna 
like have these series of events happen like because i think like things have happened just beyond her concerts like you know there's been I mean, this takeoff i mean surrounding her concert there's this takeoff around social media trends of like you know what you wear to the concert what you sing like all this sort of stuff like there's so much like pressure around when you go to this concert like people are like oh i've been like learning the lyrics i've got all the sheet music i'm like i'm like mm, girl like just go to the concert and enjoy yourself like why what's all this extra stuff you gotta do um because I can tell you, the original Swifties never needed that because they just know the lyrics on the top of their head. All I'm saying is, that will come to my point later. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm, part of me is like, is her PR team this good? Or did they just, like, kind of, you know, do a little bit of work and then just got so lucky that society has honestly just taken the reins? Um, I think it's the latter. I think that they did not plan for any of this to become such a big thing. Like, obviously, tickets were always going to sell out and be really popular, but in alignment with her, like, her her old relationship ending, her new relationship happening, like, the, the who she's dating now and all, like, the fandom around that. It has just been, I feel like the, yeah, the, like, infectious spread of her, of her fandom has just been quite marvelling to watch um, and very interesting. I think this all fundamentally comes down to people bad wagoning in life um, and I would just like to comment it's gonna be a harsh comment but I just really think that mostly in life people are sheeps um, it's this like feeling of FOMO and people are like oh someone else is having an experience I see it in my stories on Instagram and um, and then like yeah like going and having that experience because somebody else is having it and they want to experience it. So I do think that this whole pandemonium has really come down to, it has been a really good reflection of how much society, how influenced we are by our, like, our environment and the society that we live in, but also this like crippling sense of FOMO that people have and sense of like, wanting to belong to something or experience something that is like everybody else, which I find so interesting because, um, I don't know, individuality is just shrinking out there. And I think I've spoken about this in podcasts before, but like social media has such a big part to play in that in terms of people becoming less independent in their thinking and, and, and in creativity. Um, but I th for me, I felt like this, this whole Taylor Swift like fandom has really been a huge example of that for me. Um, and it makes me really think about, uh, I actually, it honestly, make, it honestly makes me kind of concerned. Because I'm going to tell you, I saw friends who I know for a fact were never into Taylor Swift. And when I was back in my young days going to Taylor Swift and being super into her, nobody was into her. 1989, definitely a lot less people were into her. But now I have these friends like on the stories and they're like, oh my God, literally, like, best night of my life. I was like, oh, was it now? Was it? Because um, I haven't ever heard you, like, play her on the radio. I mean, on the, like, speaker system in your car. Like, that's an interesting development I see happening here. Um, and, like, yeah, I just think that's really interesting. Also, in the same turn, like, one of my friends did recognise that they were kind of, like, they were saying, oh, going to see Taylor Swift is, like, going to see an artist at the peak in our generation and it's not often that it happens true I don't disagree I think it's like they were saying it's like similar to like seeing Michael Jackson in his peak I'm like mm. I mean yes agreed and I can I totally understand from that point of view like why you would like why you would have FOMO where, where I think you're going there to experience something purely because you want to experience it but not necessarily because you're pretending to like be a huge fan and enjoy it I feel like I accept those people more those people but the people who are like Oh, like best night of my life, or oh, um, you know, like suddenly I'm taking on all of like the traditions. I'm putting that in big air quotations with my fingers. Traditions that you're supposed to have when you go to the concerts. I just like don't buy into that. I'm like, no, you're just bandwagoning. I feel like you just feel FOMO of missing out and being an outsider to something that's happening in society. So you feel like you need to spend so much money to go and have that experience. And I don't agree with that. Like, I think, I mean, have more of a backbone, people, you know, like, have a bit more individuality and uniqueness to you. Just because all of your friends are going to a concert doesn't mean that you have to go to it. It's okay to miss out on something. It's okay to not like something that everybody else likes. It's fine. 
So, yeah, I think that is like a big part of why this whole Taylor Swift pandemonium one is happening and two, why it frustrates the hell out of me because uh, people being sheep is just gross. Okay, second thing is that I realized when Singapore, Singapore's approach to Taylor Swift was really interesting. So if you don't know, like they essentially bought exclusive rights for her to just perform only in um, Singapore for Southeast Asia. So she had performances in Tokyo, but then other than that for Asia, it was only in um, Singapore, which meant that all of these other countries who have like a very high population, like Indonesia, um, were not able to ha host Taylor Swift and have her um, perform live in their countries, which made, one, it less accessible for people in Southeast Asia. Two, it like monopolized the concert completely because Singapore was just looking out for themselves and like gaining tourism and like in revenue and becoming, in once again, in quotation, air, like air quotation finger, I want, pff, cannot talk. Um, the the best city in Asia, because apparently they're always competing with who knows which country, probably just Hong Kong, which I mean, they've already exceeded them. So they should just move on. Sorry, so they, yeah, they bought the exclusive rights and so nobody else could really host her, which I think was kind of lame. But if that was not enough in terms of getting all, everyone to come to Singapore over six shows, which is a lot, they, also had really expensive prices. Like they had this $10,000 Marina Bay Sands package. I'm sorry, 10,000 Singaporean dollars is ridiculous. Uh, what are you paying for at that point? I really don't know. But anyway, of course some people who were desperate or some people who had the money purchased those tickets. Um, but the thing that was actually like so insufferable in Singapore during the Taylor Swift pandemonium was I am like one, I am 98% sure that the Singapore government paid, not paid, but even like mandated all of, all of the Singapore F&B malls and everything to play only Taylor Swift for the entire time that she was there. The place, I worked, walked through this like office space many times over the two weeks and I kid you not, every single day, Every time of the day, they were playing Taylor Swift. I went to another mall. They were playing, like, just instrumental Taylor Swift. No vocals, no lyrics, just the backtrack. I went to a bagel place. They were playing Taylor Swift. Like, when I tell you, it was everywhere, and it was like they were shoving it down your throat so hard. It was, I'm, I'm not even, like, over-exaggerating over when I say that. So then you have this situation where you're like stuck in this country where they're having Taylor Swift perform. And then not only is society on the internet being like, oh, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, and making you feel FOMO to go. But then the damn country that you're like living in is endlessly reminding you that you didn't get tickets to the concert. You should go get tickets to the concert. And then I'm pretty sure the amount of resales that they had was like crazy. So it made me really think about I think like this example really makes me think about these curated experiences that are being developed in society nowadays. And like these are super popular. Like every time I think, I mean, now whenever someone's setting up new, they're always like, oh, what's our like, you know, what's that Instagram attraction that people's gonna bring people here? Or, like what are people coming here to take a photo of? Um, and it's kind of frustrating because you, I really wish that that wasn't, necessary but unfortunately like in the society that we live in it is necessary and so I think when you look at these like curated experiences that we're creating for people that are very much so for photography or you know building like a pat like a, this crazy pandemonium around Taylor Swift it's really for me it makes me concerned because it makes me feel like they are lulling people into this sense of reality that isn't actually a reality that they're choosing for themselves. You know, I think if you're told enough, like, okay, just for example, in those two weeks, I had Tales of Play to me endlessly. Um, I had stories come on my Instagram. I had people telling me about going to Taylor Swift. You like see fans on the street, you see posters, everything. And 
you're constantly seeing this experience. And so, you, of course, you're going to think, oh, should, should I be also going to that? Like, maybe I should go and spend $800 to buy a resale ticket to go. Or maybe I, maybe I should because I don't want to be left down. I want to have that experience. And for me, that is just not right, especially if it's coming from a situation where, like, a, a government's, like, paid so much money to have exclusive rights. Like, fine, do your business deal, whatever, but, like, don't then shove that down people's throats to make them feel like they need... Because you know what you're doing in that sense. Like, you are influencing people to live and have a certain experience, um, which I think is just really not fair. Um, and you're forcing, like, a reality and experience on somebody. And at that point, I'm just like, leave people alone. So, yeah, I think that is one part of it. Another part, another thing that, that made me think a bit from this whole experience is just, like, how much of what we live in and what we lived, like, how much of our lives, I guess, is what we are truly interested in? Or are we really just being pushed all of these things and then it's becoming this... We're now in this position where we actually don't know what we like and what we don't like and I listened to a really good podcast um, by Ezra Klein that was about how to develop taste and this is really thought-provoking because in this podcast essentially they, he was interviewing a fellow like journalist um, and researcher who was talking about how I guess essentially society and people have lost are losing the ability to curate their own taste and style and things that they like because we are now being pushed so many like AI generated, algorithm driven things of what they think we like because we look at one thing and it's making us a lot more smaller minded, which I totally agree on. Like if you go and look at your Instagram, it is so hard on your Instagram to get pushed something new in your explore. If you go to your explore right now, everything you see there is things that you already look at or you're interested in. But there's nothing new that they're showing you that's like, oh, are you interested in yarn bombing? Are you interested in, I don't know, like electric guitar? Like no one's showing me new things that I could learn from or be interested in or like want to know more about. Um, and so, like, where we're being pushed to now in society is this place where we're only living within the bubble where we are familiar with what's being shown to us. We are comfortable with what we're hearing, seeing, learning from, and we're not being challenged anymore. And that is a very sad space to be in, I think, in life, because... I personally, I think the whole like idea and concept of life is to learn, be curious, ask questions, you know, step outside of your comfort zone and be challenged. Not every day of your life is going to be super comfortable. It's not going to be familiar. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Because if you wanted that, I mean, each to their own, right? But for me, if I wanted that, then I don't know. I'd rather like not spend all my time trying to like make money and live life in a sense, like I would rather just go and, I don't know, do something that's subpar and just like, I don't know, maybe I just wouldn't want to live if I wasn't able to be curious and explore the world. I don't know. So I, I think just this whole concept of like people not knowing what is to their taste anymore is such an interesting point and thought. I think that you should carry with yourself as you live your daily life is like, you know, when I'm seeing this ad, is this because I am interested in this? And then like, should, like, I think be very aware of like what you're being shown and how that's making you feel before you form a thought or opinion on something. Not everything you see on the internet is true. If someone hasn't told you that before, please catch on to it ASAP. But yes, I think this whole Taylor Swift fandom has just really made me feel very 
disheartened about society because I feel like I have an unwavering, no, my faith in everyone is wavering, sorry. Yeah, because it just feels like there's no individuality or like independence in thinking. And to watch so many people just be like such a sheep to an experience and spend thousands and thousands on dollars to have an experience that honestly, I don't really feel like they're even that connected to is crazy. Anyway, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna take a peanut butter break. Today, I have this peanut butter. It's called Manny Life. Um, and my friend, Manny Life, showing you up close on camera. Uh, Manny Life was introduced to me by my friend, Denby. And um, I was staying at her home and she was like, do you like peanut butter? And I was like, uh, pff, first of all, you don't listen to my podcast if you're asking me if I like peanut butter. Um, but yeah, secondly, yes, I like peanut butter. Show me the goods. Anyway, so she introduced me to this Manny Life, which is from England. And very good. Very, very good. Like, oh, it's just like nice and roasted. They have like a whole halves of peanuts inside of there. You know how much I love a crunchy peanut butter. But um, sensational. And I'm going to... Sens anyway, sensational. And I'm going to take a quick nom and just show you this baddie. This baddie. Like, look at how thick that is. Ooh, oosh. Okay, you can't see it if you're listening in the podcast, but she's taking a bite. She's taking a bite. My only qualm with it is it's, it is a little bit oily. Mmm. <gasps> it's so thick and yum. Watch me eat, like, all of that. Also, mm. oh, no. You know, like, peanut butter is really sticky and dry. I need to drink some water, sorry. <clears throat> okay, my last point here is that, you know what, maybe I'm just being grumpy auntie in this, in the little corner, being a little possessive gal over my Taylor Swift. Part of me does feel like that. Part of me is like, you know, guys, I was there since day one. And you weren't. And now I'm just being bitter. And I will take accountability that at least 10% of this conversation is about that. It's driven from that. But a solid 80% is definitely from my disappointment in society. My conclusions for this podcast are, I really think that people should take a step back and really think about something. Some, th think about why you like something or why you're doing something sometimes before you do it. You know, like, are you actually interested in this? Or are you just interested in it because society, social media, the people around you are telling you that you should like it? Because if it's the latter, once again, think further. Is this, like, why am I being so influenced by my environment? Is this what I want to drive my decisions? And my interests? Am I best representing myself in this situation by choosing the FOMO path? And you know what? Sometimes it's okay. Like it's okay to like buckle to the FOMO. I've done it before. Of course. But I think accept that you are doing that and don't be a faker that you're not. Um, because it's okay to just be FOMO momentarily and be like, you know what, I'm not really that into this person, but I'm going because my friends are going to this DJ, right? Cool, fine. But it irks me when people are like, I'm going and I'm so obsessed with this artist. Yes. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, I did a podcast a while back about values and I think that's a really good podcast to watch and listen to in linking back to this conversation because I think if you know your values really well and who you are, I think you can always reflect on like when you are making decisions, are you doing it in honor of yourself and being true to your values? I think that's something to think about. Um, and I would, the last thing I would say is just like, if you like me and I chose the path of like not going to Taylor Swift, didn't buy the tickets, yes, I, was tempted 
but I would like to pat myself on the back and say that, you know, I held my ground and I did what I actually wanted to do, which was originally not go. And life is going to challenge you guys. Like people, there are always going to be people doing things that you might want to experience or do, but make the right decision for yourself and hold ground to like, hold your ground on, you know, your decisions. Have a backbone. Don't be spineless. Okay, bye.